Well, I'm Bruce Shanning, and today in Homemade Science, I thought I'd show you some more examples of some homemade toys that demonstrate this idea of centripetal or centrifugal forces. Uh, these have been very popular with students, and we'll take a look and see how they're made. So, let's get started. Now, these pieces have been around for quite a while. In fact, I've seen some versions listed as an antique. So I... These early pieces had metal springs bent in a circular shape and could be turned by cranks that were offset, or they could be mounted directly onto a hand drill. I then made the same piece, only I used paper instead of steel springs for the ribs. The first time I ever saw this piece used was actually to explain why the Earth is flattened at the North and South Pole. The same behavior of the Earth spinning causes it to bulge out at the equator about 21 kilometers or 13 miles wider than it is at the poles. While this piece has been around for at least a century for demonstration purposes, more recently it's been made into a toy and they look something like this. Instead of using gears or motors, it's powered by simply rubbing the axle back and forth between your hands, and you see we get the same results. We have a couple of versions here. This one has sparkles on the blades, uh, but it's the same idea. Simply twist it back and forth. And here's another one. If the ribs are thin enough, it'll actually twist on itself as it changes direction. We can also go larger, and we'll take a look at how to build these a little bit later in the video. Rather than spin this by hand, there are also powered versions of it. Here's a film clip from the 1960s of Julius Sumner Miller showing steel hoops mounted on a motorized spinning disc. And I'm going to put these into a rotator. This is why the Earth is flattened at the poles. Watch it. Now here's my version of the motorized spinner. This piece is powered by three batteries. It has a toy project motor mounted vertically and a speed controller. There's a hole drilled in the bottom of this axle and that's going to friction fit onto the shaft of the motor. In previous videos, I showed some examples of lever toys, which also has a body rotating around a fixed point. When he rotates fast enough, you can see that the legs extend outward. Let's try it on the horizontal. It doesn't work so well in that direction, so I came up with another version, and it looks like this. I've often wondered how fast would I have to spin to get this to actually happen in real life. <laughs> While I would like to try this for myself, I think I'll have to settle for this model version to do it for me. Both of these toys use the same pattern for the figures that are used to swing around. I've shown how to make these in a previous video. You can check down in my comments for the episode.
Now, coming back to these centrifugal spinners, let's take a look and see how to build one. We can try different versions of this, but I found it's easiest if the number of ribs is a multiple of four. So here we have four ribs, eight, 12, and this one has 16. The one that I'm building today has eight ribs cut from heavy stock paper. They are one half inch wide by 11 inches long. To have a classroom full of students make them, I found an easy way to pre-cut the ribs to one quarter inch wide. I simply fed heavy stock paper into a paper shredding machine, and that pre-cut the paper for me. The other materials needed? The axles are 3 16th inch power rods purchased from a craft sewer and two discs cut out of cardboard. The one disc has a larger hole in it so it slides easily up and down that axle. I'll start by using a glue gun to attach all of the ribs to that top disc. After they're all attached, I'll turn it over, put a cup on top of it, put the second disc on top of that, and I'll glue the ribs to the other disc. After it's had a chance to cool, I want to attach the axle by gluing it to both sides of that top disc. Once the glue is dried, it's now ready to give this a try. As you can see, the bottom moves nice and easy. And when we spin it, it works really well. Try one-handed. All right. Well, there they are. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I want to thank you for watching. Okay, bye.